Do you want to hit more solid and consistent volleys while you're at the net with confidence? Hey, this is Mirabhan Aranchat, host of Tennis Summit 2022, a free online tennis conference and the biggest tennis conference in the world online. And today I've got a free preview session for you with coach Peter Freeman from Crunch Time Coaching about how to hit more consistent and solid volleys. And if you want to watch the full length session of this video, plus over 40 others with amazing coaches such as Rick Macy, Paul Anacone, Peter Freeman, Ryan Reedy, Jeff Salzenstein, Gigi Fernandez, and many others, then go to the link below this video or go to tennisfilesummit.com to pick up your free ticket. All right, now let's get straight into the video. All right, so just block the volley. Just, just stick the racket out. Well, you gotta do more than that. Okay, well what I want you to do is punch the volley. Punch it, punch your volley. Here we go, punch it. Punch the ball. Okay, the first thing you need for a great buy is a good shoulder turn. So show me that shoulder turn. Come on, get that shoulder turn going. Come on. Oh my goodness gracious. No, 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 man. You're not even using the correct grip. I'm not? Well, what is the right grip? Here's the truth. Volleys are more complicated than you think. To have a great volley and play the net effectively, you gotta have excellent technique and you have to know the art of net play. In this video, I'm gonna give you my top 10 volley tips that demystify net play and have you winning more points at the net. Hi, my name is Peter Freeman and I run Crunch Time Coaching and I also run something called Tennis Con, which is similar to the Tennis Summit, so I know how much Maribon works to put this on for you guys. This is his sixth one, which is absolutely amazing. It's an honor to be a part of it. Make sure you watch as many videos as possible because there's lots of great stuff and let's get into today's lesson. Okay, number one on my list is actually a question that I want you to think about, so maybe even stop the video and give it a thought, because uh, when I ask people this live in front of me, most people get it wrong. When you're going to volley, what is the first body part that must move in order to hit a good volley? Okay, think about that. What's the first body part that must move? Now, you probably, heard your coaches tell you to move your feet when you volley. So a lot of people say, well, your feet have to move first. And that is not correct. The other one, and probably the most common one, that's, that's taught, and I think it's doing a lot of recreational players a disservice out there, is you're taught to make your shoulder turn as your first move. Turn your shoulders as your first move. Set up by turning your shoulders. Now, if you have time to turn your shoulders on a volley, then that is a good habit. But what I want you to think about, pretend you're a, in a baseball game and you're playing shortstop and somebody hits a rocket right at your face. What's the first body part that's gotta move? Boom, your hands, okay? So at the net, you're gonna be facing similar situations to where the ball can be coming like a rocket, you're set here, and what you gotta do first is just learn how to move your hands, okay? If you're thinking about your shoulders first, then lots of times you're going to make too big a movement and you're not gonna catch up to the ball. So imagine this, that as you see me here, the ball's coming super fast at me and I turn my shoulders, by the time I hit, I'm gonna be late. I gotta make sure that I can move my hands first, move your hand, and then volley out in front. So what you wanna think about is with your hand here, uh, of course being in the continental grip, what you want to think about is being able to relax that hand movement first, lay the wrist back, lay the wrist back, then go forward and volley, and if you have more time, the shoulder turns a bonus. So if I, can, if I have time, I can lay the wrist back, then turn the shoulders, and then volley it for a firmer volley if I have that time to do that. So that's number one on my list, maybe the most important, because I find that so many people overswing their volleys, and it's usually because they're taking too big a shoulder turn when the ball is coming too fast. All right, let's get to the next one. Okay, reason number two, and this is huge, why volleys are more complicated than they appear, 
and why you gotta really put some time into them. That's why I'm making this video is I want you to understand that you gotta put some time and effort into your volley game. You just can't think about, well, I just gotta block the ball because racket at angles are brutal. Just kind of like in golf, the angles at which you impact the ball are brutal in tennis. So a great example I like to point out to my students, especially a lot of times your first volley is gonna be here in the midcourt is the racket awareness has got to be on point. If I'm here and I'm hitting this volley, that's going to go over the net, that's going to go in the net. Okay? Over the net, in the net, out. And you're probably going, I can barely even see what this guy is doing. I don't even see much change. And that's the point I'm trying to make. Watch this. In the net, over the net, out. Okay? You got to understand that. Again, let me show you again. Watch this. In the net over the net. I'm barely changing, but it takes that practice. I can't really tell you how to improve your, your understanding of the racket at angle. You've just got to understand that this is part of the skill you have to understand and go out there and practice and through many, many volleys you understand like that's perfect and that's in the net and that's out. It's just going to take you that practice to understand that, hey, the ball is coming fast and how it impacts those strings is going to greatly impact where the ball goes. So it's a lot of developing that racket out awareness. It's more than just sticking your racket out and blocking the ball or punching the ball. There's an art to this game. Okay, number three on my list of top 10 volley tips is I want you to write this down. The edge of power. And this is what tennis at an advanced game is. Tennis pros are playing every shot with their edges rather than thinking about hitting the middle of the strings. Of course, they want to hit the sweet spot. They want to hit the ball on a good part of the strings, but if they're going to hit top spin, the top edge becomes the edge of power. See that? So if they're going to hit top spin, watch, they're attacking the ball with the top edge of the racket. Boom! If you're going to volley, because we want to put a little bit of underspin on it, now the bottom edge, the bottom of your racket becomes the edge of power. This is where you're going to be able to have the most power and control and get that nice bite on your volleys by doing that. Again, we don't want to be volleying with a racket straight like that. All we're going to do, we're not going to put any spin on it. We're going to miss a lot in the net. A lot are going to go out on us. Understand that volleying with the edge of a racket, the edge of power, it's just really going to give that ball your spin, which is an undercut, your power, and your control. Okay, this next one I got is from the great Brett Hobden. This is a great um, lesson for you on the volley that I actually saw on TV on a one-minute clinic many years ago on the Tennis Channel. So he talked about winning the collision, losing the collision, and basically just having a draw, meeting the ball. And this, again, is what you want to think about when you're volleying. What do you want to do? What do you want the outcome to be on your volley? And also, what kind of ball are you receiving? So let's talk about winning the collision. When would you win the collision? Winning the collision is when you would probably take a bigger shoulder turn and you would volley the ball firmer you're going after the ball. So this would be on slower balls. Also, maybe balls where you're further back in the court. You're behind the service box and you're transitioning. You want to really pop that ball. You get a meat ball at the net and you want to go to it. You're winning the collision. You're going to the ball. You're going after the ball. You have a bigger shoulder turn and you're blocking. You're making forward progress through the ball. Now, the opposite of that would be losing the collision. When would you want to do that? That's when you'd want to take some pace off of the ball. Maybe hit a drop shot. So like McEnroe was great at this. A ball would come super fast, he'd be here, and the ball would hit his racket, and his racket would actually go backwards after that. And a lot of times he'd hit a nice little touch volley. So when you want to hit a touch shot, or when you want to take pace off the ball, you can also have a slow ball come at you and hit and lose the coll collision. So you don't necessarily have to have a ball coming fast to think about losing the collision, but when you want to take sting off the ball and deaden the ball, your racket would go backwards 
after you hit the volley. So that's losing the collision. Now, meeting the ball. When would you do this? This is when the ball is going to be coming super fast and you just want to block it to a certain area of the court. This is when you would just basically put your racket out. Normally you would have a firmer uh, grip on the ball too. So especially great for a ball that's coming like right at you and all you got to do, let's see you see an open court to deflect to. The ball's coming super fast and all you got to do is just basically block it. That's, that's basically just a draw right there. You're not looking to go forward. You're not looking to lose. You're just basically meeting the ball, holding on to it, make it make good contact and deflect it where you want it to go. Again, this lot of times would be coming on a faster ball. So think about that when you're at the net volume. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then go to tennisfilesummit.com to pick up your free ticket to watch this session in full, plus over 40 world-class coaches presenting on technique, strategy, fitness, and the mental game at tennisfilesummit.com. See you at the summit.